Building secure and reliable APIs is one of the most challenging aspects of web development. What's surprising is that, despite working with APIs daily, both front-end and back-end developers often misunderstand, overlook, or blindly rely on libraries that abstract away the client-server communication. This lack of understanding leads to inconsistent response structures, security vulnerabilities, and performance bottlenecks. So it is a no-brainer that everybody involved in building modern applications should have the knowledge required to design, implement, and consume APIs correctly. The good news is that gaining this knowledge is easier than you might expect. While most of us think of REST when it comes to APIs, it is worth mentioning that there are actually multiple paradigms, each with its own advantages and trade-offs. Unlike REST, which returns fixed data structures, GraphQL lets clients specify exactly what data they need in a single request. This prevents transferring unnecessary data over the wire, making it highly efficient. gRPC, on the other hand, is a high-performance API framework that uses protocol buffers instead of JSON for data serialization. It supports bidirectional streaming, making it ideal for real-time communication between microservices. At the end of the day, all these solutions address the same problem of managing inputs, which are the changes triggered by user actions and outputs, or the information returned when querying resource endpoints. In this video, we'll focus on the most popular solution. REST follows a stateless client-server architecture using standard HTTP methods to perform operations on resources. It's simple, scalable, and widely supported, making it the default choice in most use cases. Imagine you are designing an API for an e-commerce platform. In this case, an input could be a customer adding an item to their cart, updating their shipping address, or placing an order. On the other hand, outputs are what the API returns in response to queries, like fetching product details, retrieving a user's order history, or checking the current stock of an item. If we remove all the layers of complexity, at its core, an API allows clients like web or mobile apps to consume and modify data from a database. The data layer can mainly perform four operations. Following this idea, well-designed APIs map these database operations to clear and predictable endpoints that follow RESTful principles. Remember that naming consistency is key when defining these endpoints. Following well-established standards such as the Richardson Maturity Model makes your API more intuitive and easier to work with, especially for new developers. Let's break this down with a practical example to see how CRUD maps to REST in action. For our e-commerce platform, imagine we're working with a resource called Products. To add a new product to the database, you'd use a POST request to Products. The client sends a JSON object with the product's name, price, and description as the payload, and the server responds with a status code like 201 created, along with the newly created product's ID. To fetch product details, you'd use a GET request. A GET sent to the product's root path could return a list of all products, while GET to products 5 retrieves the specifics of the product with a specified ID. To modify an existing product, like changing its price, you'd send a PUT or PATCH request to the same product's path. The difference between actions is key here. PUT replaces the entire resource, so you have to send the full updated object as the payload, while PATCH lets you send just the changes, like the price for instance. The server confirms with a 200 OK or 204 NO content. Finally, to remove a product, a delete request to products should do the trick. Since no response body is needed, a 204 no content response would be enough here as well. Designing and testing APIs can be a drag, but that's where today's sponsor, Echo API, comes into play. With Echo API's free toolkit set, you can spend less time on tedious tasks like designing, testing, and debugging, and more time building your product. Plus, their new AI features are a game changer. Say goodbye to manual updates. Echo API's AI features auto-generate parameter names, values, and descriptions, saving you time and effort. Let Echo API handle the heavy lifting so you can focus on what really matters. The rest to CRUD mappings keep your API predictable. Developers consuming it can guess the endpoints without digging through documentation. But here's where things get tricky. Consistency isn't just about naming, it's also about structuring your responses. A common pitfall is returning inconsistent data shapes. If two backend developers are working on the API and they don't share a common set of standards, product details could end up having different structures for different endpoints. This forces front-end devs to write extra logic to handle the mess. Instead, you should always keep your DTOs consistent. And of course, these rules apply to errors as well. Consistency and reliability are essential, but a few easy extra steps can significantly improve your API's efficiency and usability. First of all, a well-designed API also needs to evolve without breaking existing consumers. This is where versioning comes in. Imagine you've been running your e-commerce API for years, but now your product data structure needs to change. Instead of forcing all clients to update at once, 
Your API architecture should be flexible enough to support versioning. The simplest approach is URL versioning, where you include the version number in the endpoint, but header-based versioning, which keeps URLs cleaner, is also a viable option. On top of that, giving clients control over the amount of data transferred over the wire can do wonders for performance. Fetching all products from the database might work fine when you only have a few hundred entries, but things can rapidly deteriorate when thousands of entities are involved. Instead of returning everything in one massive payload, pagination splits result into pages improving performance and usability. Filtering and sorting through query parameters is also essential since users rarely just want a list of all the products. But all this work is useless if you are missing a key aspect of good API design. A well-structured API is only valuable if it's secure. Without proper safeguards, it becomes an open door for unauthorized access, data breaches and abuse. One of the most effective ways to secure API endpoints is through authentication and authorization. This is where JSON Web Tokens come into play. These tokens are a compact and self-contained way of securely transmitting information between parties. When a user logs in, the server generates a token containing their identity and permissions, signs it with a secret key and sends it to the client. From that point on, every API request should include the token in the authorization header. Since the token is signed, the server can verify its authenticity without having to check a database on every request. This makes JSON Web Tokens efficient for stateless authentication. However, there are a couple of important rules when working with JWTs. First, set an expiration time to prevent long-lived tokens from being exploited. Second, you should not store sensitive information inside the token as anyone with access to it can decode the payload. And finally, all communication should happen over HTTPS. By the way, Echo API makes securing your API a breeze with support for multiple authentication methods, so don't forget to check them out at the link below. It should not come as a surprise that your API is practically useless if it does not scale under load. One of the easiest ways to improve API performance is caching. Instead of hitting the database for every request, frequently requested data can be stored and reused. This can happen at three levels, on the client side to prevent redundant calls, at the CDN level to cache responses closer to the user, or on the server where the API itself caches database queries to reduce load. But even the best optimized API can crash under excessive traffic. Rate limiting is a great mechanism to prevent abuse. This restricts the number of requests a client can make within a certain time window. A common approach here is the token bucket algorithm, where each client gets a limited number of request tokens per minute. Once they're used up, further requests are blocked until the limit resets. Another important aspect that is rarely discussed is API documentation. Luckily for us, there are standardized tools and practices that make this process easier, ensuring that APIs remain understandable and maintainable. The Open API specification is considered the industry standard for documenting RESTful APIs. It provides a structured way to define endpoints, expected request parameters, response formats, authentication methods, and error handling. So remember that designing a secure, scalable, and efficient API isn't just about following best practices, but also about understanding why these principles matter. If you enjoy this type of content, you should check some of my other videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.